Hey, how's it going everyone? GC Performance here back with another video and today Scott released the brand new revision of the Scott Spark, uh, the full frame redesign. Today we're gonna be taking a look at the functions of the frame, what they really changed compared to uh, from last year to this year, uh, the integration system they did, the reason why they chose 120 millimeter travel for front and rear compared to 100 millimeter travel for XC bikes, um, certain features with the handlebars, and other features like that as well with the bike. And uh, I'll just kind of touch base with you. They also did some new things with the Silverton wheels, the, one, the, the SLs, they actually changed them. So uh, there are some specs to this bike. I figured I'd go ahead and break down everything. I got to take a look into the, uh, the dealer meeting as well and kind of get the in and out of the bike. And that way I can probably touch on some of these points as well to kind of give you guys a better uh, uh, idea behind it. So has Scott made a bike? This was their full on XC bike. Their race bike, and I know who these people are buying. I know who's buying this bike. It's you guys. I deal with you guys all day. I'm a bike salesman. Um, majority of times when people come in, they're usually looking, especially for XC bike, they're weight weenies. On a mountain bike, they want really lightweight stuff. I have a customer who literally wants uh, different backing brake pads from steel to aluminum because it saves them uh, 20 grams, you know, whatever it is. So are they kind of dropping the ball here by making this full XC bike? a 120 millimeter travel front and 120 millimeter travel rear. Um, now granted, we're not gonna ignore the elephant in the room. You can see this bike looks really crazy. The whole rear shock is housed inside of this down tube area, which is a first, uh, uh, I think the industry first for sure, or they bought over the company that uh, had them before. Um, but the whole idea is this is gonna be their, their bike. They're, they're not gonna make a, a 100 millimeter race bike. This is what Nino's riding. Uh, this is what they're gonna be racing in the mountain bike XC race cups. Um, so it's a 100 millimeter rear shock in here and 100 millimeter, or 100, 120 millimeter in the rear, 120 millimeter in the front. Um, and the Evo and the RC and all their lines. So is that good enough to compete with, you know, these big massive, you know, you see Trek super caliber with a 60 millimeter travel bike. You see the Epic with a 100 millimeter travel. Uh, Matthew Vanderpool, he's on the 100 millimeter Canyon. He's dominating races. Is 120 millimeter going to be too much travel for an XC bike? Um, and the whole idea behind this was that they spoke with Nino. I mean, obviously they have a, a, a multiple world champ uh, title rider for them, and they really sat down with him, and they, he put in a lot of input on this bike. And he wanted to say, it's not for everyday consumers, but he said during those races, uh, with 120 millimeter travel in the front and also the rear, uh, it's able to allow him to, you know, send it harder into the corners or send it harder into a rock garden section or on the scent or anything like that, it makes him feel more comfortable going to features faster and he knows he has enough travel to go ahead and hit it a little bit harder so he can control it a little bit better. The bike is has a lower center of gravity and also with this whole redesign of this rear shock, there's no more pivots, there's no more links, there's no more, um, a lot of separation. It's just one smooth piece of carbon right here. So they said that it's going to provide better lateral stiffness and what i mean by that is when you're putting that power on a bicycle and you're pedaling 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 you don't want the bike to sway back and forth so with this bike having this massive carbon inlay right here and there's not a lot of bolts and not a lot of uh hookups for the fsr shock this is all one piece of carbon up and down um so it will allow this bike to be stiffer laterally so they're saying that because this bike has the extra travel it'll be more capable of uh performing better on trails and also it'll be able to um, be stiffer for riding um, not only with this uh, redesign, you can see right here is where the shock will drop out of. Um, or that's a door right there that actually opens up and you can actually adjust the shock. You can add air there, you can adjust the rebound and that's where the twin lock will still happen. Yes, this bike still does have twin lock on there um, and we'll get into that in a second. Also with the new Scott Silverton wheels, they are different from last year. These are their one piece carbon fiber wheels if you guys have not known these. Um, they actually changed the inner diameter to being instead of them being 26 millimeter internal width i believe they're 30 millimeter internal width so they're actually new for this year um they're going a little bit wider which everyone else is to make it you know run a little bit lower tire pressure and you can also see that on some certain models they added the um the tire gauge reader for pressure i mean it's a little small things like scott did but anyways let's get into the bike it looks Beautiful, it looks different. It's definitely throwing a lot of people off at first, but I think they did a hell of a job. They took a lot of the design from the Scott Addict road bike. You can see how this is all integrated right here where the cable's going to. Um, the cables go, front brake goes down, uh, rear brake goes inside here, into the handlebar and down. 
Now they're making different variations of this carbon handlebar. They're making a full one piece carbon handlebar where it's stem and bar. You can get different variations of stem heights, of bar width, negative drop whatsoever. I think they even have a Nino version, which is like negative 40, which is insane. Um, they're also gonna make a two piece bar. They have integrated Garmin mounts and, or integrated Synchros mounts that you can do for whatever you're looking for, uh, GoPro, everything. They also changed the twin lock system. Um, before they used to have just a twin lock where you press it in a lockout front shock and rear shock and then you have a release. Well now because they have a dropper post incorporated on this bike, they have it fully integrated three piece uh, system. I think I got a picture of it here. So you guys can take a look. I don't know if this is gonna help you guys or not. You see right there in the corner, that's very pixelated, but right there, that bottom one on the left uh, where the arrows point to, that's the triple. So it's a full on triple integrated three piece with a dropper post integrated into there. So very cool. Uh, some key features are you can run bigger tires with better clearance. Um, it has a, the SL frame weight with the shock and hardware is 1,870 grams. The head tube angle is 67.2 grams. The max tire size you can run is a 2.6. So there's, you can see they're putting bigger travel, bigger tires on this bike. It's making it more capable. Yes, it's an XC bike, but it's making the, the rider feel more confident going into corners, going into features and giving them more confident on the bike, which should allow them to get out of that feature quicker. Um, the max chainring on this bike that you can allow is a 40 now if you want. So you can actually put a 40 millimeter chainring on here as well. Whereas before it was a 38, so you're getting two more teeth. Um, and then the sides available are small and extra large. Uh, that also the average reach increase of 15 millimeters. So you're going to see on these bikes, the average reach for where it was from handlebar to there actually increased by 15 millimeters. So you're going to see on stem sizes, whatever it used to be a large last year, they're going to bring it back by 10 millimeters to, uh, fix that or correct that as well. But the bikes look really good. I mean, it's different, but it looks really, really good. I'm a big fan of it. I want to see it in person. Um, the whole main purpose behind this, this situation right here with the rear shock one, when it's housed inside here and when it's pivoting inside here, it's protected from the elements. You don't have to worry about dust, sand, grit, rain, the shock, what that means for the, you guys, better longevity from the shock, less servicing to worry about. And hopefully that thing will be performing at its max efficiency. And you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, sludge, grime, grit, everything getting inside there, which could uh, damage the seals after a while. So benefit to you guys, shock will last longer. Not benefit to me, because I don't know how hard it's gonna be to take that shock out of there. I'm not like a force that. It has a lower center of gravity, uh, increased lateral stiffness, like I said, because of the fact that there are less um, carbon or less voltage or linkage points on here um, that will actually make the bike stiffer. It can be one piece of carbon, it'll make it a lot better. More room in the front triangle, so now you can actually get two water bottles on here. Before you can only get one water bottle on the Scots. Now you can have a water bottle cage here and also on the down tube. So now you can fit two water bottle cages on the bike. Before that was a Scots, they had the shock that was right here, so you couldn't do that. Um, and also for us, it sets a bike apart on the sales floor, which is good. Um, with these handlebars, you can see the cables look a lot. One thing I used to always complain about with Scott's bikes is that I always said that in the front of the bike, it looks like a rat's nest because there's, you had the, the front hydraulic brake, the rear hydraulic brake, the twin lock system, a dropper post. And if you had gear cables, it looked like just a rat's nest in there. So now with this integration system, you have these cables that are actually ran clean. They're hugged underneath there. The cables are in internally through here. They drop down into this headset, just like the Attic Road Bike. And they're able to go down through here, through the down tube and all the way out here. And they actually ran pretty smoothly and pretty cleanly as well. It's not a big pain in the butt. They go right next to where the fork crown goes into. And uh, it makes the bike more aero, if you want to call that. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, with the headset as well. They actually change the headset a little bit. So you can actually do like a flip chip, similar to like the Sump Jumpers or the Epics. Uh, with these things, you can actually adjust the head angle by 0. 0.6 degrees. So the Spark 900, the non-RC, the Spark 900, is actually in a slacker position. And the Spark RCs are set to the steeper position, positions from the factory. But if you wanted to, if you're in a more steep or more XC race, uh, or if you're in a more XC racy flat kind of thing, you set it to the steep situation. And you're good to go if you're going downhill you can set it to the more slacker and you can change this out the fork pops out a mechanic can flip the cups and it has two incident things right there kind of similar to that and you see it's very easy to do um but yes uh all in all the bike looks great they also make so these are the rc versions these are all on their specialized website 
Um, they're all, again, 120 millimeter travel, front and rear. You have different wheels on here and different situations on here as well uh, for those. They're all gonna be included with a drop pose. I don't know how I feel about that. That's my biggest concern about this bike. I love Scott. I think they do an amazing job with their bikes and how they look. I mean, Scott kills it with their colors. They kill it for what you get for the bang for the buck. This white looks absolutely dumb hard. It's, it's beautiful, oh my gosh. The brown and everything looks gorgeous. But I don't know how I feel about a full XC race bike being 120 millimeter travel front, 120 millimeter travel rear, and a dropper post on it. Now, the, when this video releases, it's the 9th of June. Um, Nino has a race coming up. If he dominates that race, I got a feeling that's gonna set a huge precedent to these companies, and I think people are gonna be putting orders like crazy. But when you have bikes like the Epic with a brain for 100 millimeter travel, when you have people still racing the XC races with uh, the Trek Super Caliber, 60 millimeter travel, going the opposite direction, less travel, uh, or the just the, the regular 100 millimeter travel bikes, these really lightweight XC bikes. Yes, this has its integration system. Yes, it looks cool. But doing all this also added a little bit of weight, very minimal, but it added weight. Um, so it's uh, all these XC guys want light ways possible and less travel as possible because they just want to go around stuff and, and have not as much movement in the shocks. But we will see what happens. But Scott does a great job. One, a price point. Two, best bang for the buck of what you get. I mean, like, look at this thing. This thing's $4,000 and it's a full carbon fiber XC bike. This does not come with dropper posts. It's pretty cool, but it's gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. So I'm excited for this line. I'm excited for this tech. I'm excited to see his company. I'm, I'm, I'm always excited. I mean, yes, I sell them, but even if you don't buy the bike for me, I think it's really cool what Scott does for these bikes. So big fan of it. Um, they will also offer this in aluminum versions as well, I believe coming up soon. So you can get aluminum version of this bike and uh, they offer the same kind of whole internal shock. But you can see right here, they have um i gotta look at okay boom this allows us over here yeah i mean it's just it's just showing i'm sure you guys can check this on youtube um you have a sag meter right here so right here what this means this can actually tell you or read your sag without having to see the shock because one you don't have the shock being seen when setting your sag so you have sag 25 15 0 and also when you compress you can actually see your phonometer right there your little o-ring and get to it also with the the bikes i forgot to mention they right there see it's all, everything's internal there's a shock inside there that's a swat door there that little thing opens up you can get to the air pressure cap you can adjust the rebound you can adjust the settings you can plug that back up very cool here's a twin lock suspension setup it looks great um better tire clearance like i said here is the internal cable routing for the bar. This is all on Scott's website, but like I said, I think they did a really cool job with the whole integration system. Even the aluminum bikes will get the integrated headset as well right here. So you're getting the integrated headset where the cables run internally in there. Um, but one of the coolest things I thought, they upgraded this little tool. So now you get a T25, a T30, and also a six millimeter. I mean, you get three tools in one to adjust your bike. Very cool, but yeah, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Are you guys hyped on this bike or not? Ask me any questions you want. I'll try to get you as much information as possible. Do you think 120 millimeter travel is too much for an XC bike? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I wish that I honestly, my personal, personal opinion, I wish they made this bike is sick. I wish they made this bike. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just how it is, 120. But I also wish they made it in a feature with 100 millimeter travel, full race bike. You know, balls to the wall speed. I think it would be sick. But we will see in the future. But from what I'm told right now, nothing. So, and this is the bike that Nino's gonna be riding and those races coming up soon. So we'll see what happens. Let me know in the comment section below if you think it's too much or too little. Let me know if you're excited for it. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.